Okay, so we have uh, Jasper College customization via 3D printing in the NEBP engineering track. With that, I'll let you guys take it away. Hello, we're a Jasper College based team here in Wyoming. Uh, we go by the Wyoming Space Engineers. Um, we're here to talk about 3D printing and uh, 3D design and how it can be used for the NEBP uh engineering track specifically but all of this can be applied to the atmospheric track as well um to start off i'm gonna hand it off to lucas he's going to talk to you about general uses of 3d printing with pre-designed parts and how that can how each team can use that to their advantage for 3d uh for their payloads and their launch and then i'm going to come back and talk to you more specifically about 3D modeling and uh, 3D design have to be used to improve your process. So first things first, there are really three main advantages to 3D modeling and design, uh, specific, specific to 3D printing. There's the convenience aspect, so you can make your launches smoother in general, and you don't have to worry too much about the payloads. You could protect uh, really delicate equipment and ensure that they're in the exact same place in the box the entire launch. And the last part is customizing your thing specifically to improve and change already existing systems for future years. An example of this is our battery switches. We modeled these and printed them. Um, as you can see here, they're mounted on the plate and they're you're able to access them from outside the box. So um, when you're trying to launch things, you don't have to repeatedly open your boxes and have to really mess with them. You just click the switches that are kind of somewhat exposed and it you know turns on new thing and it's extraordinarily convenient. A even more specific example, however, are our still camera mounts. We have these still cameras in our boxes that just takes a still image every five minutes or so. And these prints are incredibly simple and are just attached to the boxes that house the um, electronics of it and keeps the camera in a specified place throughout the entire launch and just makes sure that the photography is still and good. And as for an even more specific example is our pterodactyl casing. Now it's somewhat similar to the cut down casings you could find on the MSC website, specifically lesson eight. However, in this case, we modeled this on SOLIDWORKS and we 3D printed it. And it's basically just supposed to protect the pterodactyl to ensure that um, since it's a really delicate piece of equipment and you can't really like replace it easily, that it's safe throughout the entire flight. Um, I don't know if you could see it in the picture, but there's also slots and stuff that the wires can go through. So they're not like, tight, like too tight or anything, but it basically just protects the pterodactyl without compromising its ability to actually get data. Now, not only can you use 3D modeling and 3D design to essentially like aid your process, but you could also use pieces that you already have and just repurpose them. For example, here, the, the thing that we use to mount our 360 camera is actually uh, a part that was meant for the venting. Um, basically, it's just attached to at the top of a box and the camera is attached uh, via some rods and zip ties. And it's just a new way to repurpose pieces that you already have into, you know, into other components of your payloads. Um, before I hand it off to Jens, though, um, I would also like to talk about how there's also versatility in terms of like, like filaments. Like, so if you wanted something flexible, you could use a flexible filament. If you wanted something a bit more rigid and strong, you could use nylon as a filament, depending on what function you need. And it's there's multiple multiple filaments out there that are still relatively cheap, and you could use them for anything really. There's even resin printing where if something breaks, like the day of day of, you're able to replace it quite easily. But now I'll hand it off to Jens to talk about more specific components and customization via 3D modeling. Yeah, so one thing that I've seen a lot throughout teams is there are a lot of people using 3D printed parts, which is great, and 3D modeled parts. However, I haven't seen a lot of teams using custom designed parts for to specifically serve the purposes that they want to fulfill. And one, we found major success in being able to design 
and plan using 3D modeling. Um, here on the slide, you can see an example of before we ever even put together our payload boxes, you can have the foresight of what exactly everything's going to fit and how it's all going to go together by 3D modeling it. This is in SOLIDWORKS. Once you have a 3D model part, it's very easy to uh, send it to a laser cutter uh, as a specific file and, and you get an exact replica of what you have in your uh, design. Um, another way that 3D modeling has really helped us is during discussion. Even if we don't have a forethought or, or fully thought out plan yet, when we have several different competing ideas that each of us, you know, are having a hard time expressing to our team members, uh, we found that it's super helpful to just break out SolidWorks or any other 3D modeling software and uh, design it out so that your teammate can see it. Even if it's a quick and easy thing, it is instrumental to being able to express your ideas. Um, one thing specifically that we've been working on recently is after the launch in uh, the last eclipse, we noticed that a lot of teams were using the venting system provided by Embassy, which is a really incredible system. Uh, there's a ton of foresight in how it's made, but using 3D modeling, we realized that it's a great way to explore new ideas. So one project that we've taken on is trying to see, is there maybe a better way to do this? Um, we've been using SOLIDWORKS to try and design our own venting system and cut down combination system, see if we could get a lighter and more efficient design. You can actually see we're in the early stages, but uh, here is some of our parts uh, that you can see and uh, you can see the full assembly. And the idea is each team can make their own parts and in SOLIDWORKS and have it be rep like each, any other team throughout the country can replicate it exactly. Um, so it's a great way to communicate with other teams. So we're, again, in the very early stages of our design, uh, but if we, after our first stages of testing and uh, if we decide that it's viable, we're planning on making the STLs free to download for anyone so that we can receive more feedback on our design and try and improve it even more. Um, uh, Lucas mentioned earlier that we specifically use SOLIDWORKS as our 3D design software of choice. And I just wanted to mention, if you don't have uh, a 3D modeling uh, software available to you, there are tons of free applications you can use, like Blender is a, is a great one that I've seen people use. It's super easy. There's tons of online lessons. Um, and also a lot of colleges and universities and high schools have programs where you can get uh, a license to SOLIDWORKS through your school and oftentimes they have teaching. That's what we personally do. And uh, it's just been great to have access to the top, the industry standard software to design and develop our parts. So it's it's been great. And I, I think that's, that's our last slide, but if you have any questions, we're, we're happy to open it up to questions now. All right, any questions? Well, just one comment from James. Um, I haven't played around with lots of different filaments. You mentioned the possibility of printing in different ways. It's a good mm -hmm. idea, but just remember, you're taking this stuff to really extreme environments. And so materials that maybe look promising on the ground may not work so well when you get them really, really, really cold. That is another thing we forgot to mention. There are on uh, there are certain websites. I can't I can't remember the specific ones right now, but there are websites that have the all of those material specifications at different altitudes, different temperatures, uh, changes in temperatures, how they affect filaments, how they expand, how they shrink, and um, that's great for designing uh, and and seeing what is going to be best for this piece before you ever even launch it, and you'll know pretty much exactly how it behaves. Um, you can find those just, uh, I can't remember 
just look up 3D filament material tables. I think is how you find it, but it, it's a uh, it's great. Uh, that's a great resource. That's a great point. I forgot to mention that. Thank you for. It. But, yeah. That's a good start, but there's nothing quite like flying it. Just don't count on it to work the very first time. That is true. That is true. Make backups. That's another one. Yeah. Make backups. Yeah. Any other questions? Hey, I think I'll point out real briefly that Lucas and one of the other students went out in about 30 degree below zero weather last week and tried some testing and uh, they thought better of it after they were out there for a little while, but I won't go into too much detail on that. Yeah. Yeah. That of course, flights get much colder than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Iowa State's done some stuff with that too, with the 3D printing. Um, the uh, we've we've done some stuff with events as well too, and doing some testing. And yeah, the the material is definitely a, a big factor um, with that. Um, now that I think, about it, I don't think we've looked that much into, you're right, there's going to be expansion and shrinking as well, too. That should be looked at as well. Um, but uh, yeah, good job. So uh, any other questions? With dry ice, you can get pretty close to the temperatures of interest, but the pressure is all wrong, of course. Right. And actually, James, if you remember, we did that when we were up in Minnesota for the workshop, too. We were actually testing a lot of those vents in dry ice, so... Yep. Okay. Um, if there's no other questions, uh, thank you guys. Great job. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.